What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? I am here with one of my boo bros, uh, <laughs> who I don't, I don't think I really get to film a lot with. I don't think we've really filmed much with. I think you've been in a live yeah, stream, just random live streams, yeah, yeah. Um, and you've gotten to see some pretty funny, funny stuff with with Rob. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I think I think the live the last live stream you were on on the channel was uh, when Rob dressed up as Batman. Uh was well, it? I popped in on that Christmas one, but that was for like five seconds. Oh yeah, so you saw Santa Rob. So I saw Santa, but then yeah, um, I think there was something we were doing like watching not scary farm videos or something. Yeah, that was fun. I'm gonna take the, my glasses off. I can just see that it's like <laughs> the screen is just glaring. I look like a super villain or something. <laughs> I'm just gonna take them off. <laughs> so I see here you're you're uh, growing the beard out, man. I like it. Yeah, it's we can't really see that my lighting's not that good, but it's coming it's coming along. The sides are kinda not coming in yet, but Right. Yeah. I think we should all grow beards. We could be the beard bros. <laughs> oh. Well, actually don't most of us have some kind of facial hair. Right, yeah. Does anyone not? I think Eddie goes I think Eddie cleans. Eddie. Shoes. Eddie, yeah. Eddie I don't I think uh John has a mustache. He has something, yeah. Scott has a little something. Yeah. Lash has something. Think, Lash has definitely yeah, Lash, something. Yeah, Lash has has something. Chris, yeah. Chris, yeah. Oh, Michael doesn't have anything, does he? I think Michael's clean shaven too. Yeah. Okay. So we're mostly there, but not quite. We're almost the beard bros. <laughs> almost. Uh, this is the first episode of Shit in 2021, episode six. Trying to be more consistent on this. We're gonna make this a seasonal podcast. So from January to June, you'll get episodes throughout at least one episode or two episodes a month. So. You are the first lucky participant of 2021 to be on the, the podcast. Yeah. This is my first uh, not only video or podcast in 2021, but first any sort of content in 2021. Uh, yeah, you ended 2020 with your top 10 uh, albums of 2020, right? Yep. Um, from from what I know, too, you, you're a big music guy just like me. Uh, mm -hmm. I know you're a big metal guy. Um what are up there with some of your favorite bands, dude? Uh, wow, that's <laughs> an interesting one. I, I mean, A Day to Remember has been my favorite band since like ninth grade, I think. Right. And um, I usually consider Papa Roach number two. But after those two, it really just fluctuates a lot from year to year. Tonight, I'm wearing Story So Far. There you go. Pop punk band. Uh, it's just, it, it fluctuates. Depends on how I'm feeling that year. Um. But it's usually like pop punk and metalcore is usually my realm. I like uh, I think I, I yeah, because me too. I'm a, I'm a big uh, I love metal. I love punk. I love classic rock. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. for me, it all started you know when I was a kid, and you know, I, I remember my dad always playing music like ACDC. You know, playing you know the start the stuff that that you get into the gateway of the rock and roll world. Yeah, I've found that everything's kind of a gateway to something else. Right. Um, my dad played like he's really into jam bands and stuff. He likes um like Government Mule. Okay. I've heard of them, Warren Haynes, um, Allman Brothers. Um, so he played a lot of that in the car, and um, he he really liked blues guitarists like uh, Buddy Guy, BB um, King, stuff like that, mm -hmm. Eric Clapton, and uh, that's still what he's really into. But for me, uh, I liked it, but I kind of found my own way mm -hmm. uh, musically. My mom is, she likes music, but she was never like really into music, you know? Um, yeah. I, I just kind of found my own way and everything, like I said, kind of would lead to another for the most part. Yeah. I, I think what was a big, a big thing for me too, was when I was in elementary school, um, you know, I, I, I just, you know, as a kid, you know, you start discovering a lot of music and then the, the one band that I discovered, I think that a lot, I could, probably say a majority of the world probably enjoy is uh the beatles uh, mm -hmm. I, I was a huge beatles fan i still am um and coming into that listening to the beatles and then discovering more about the whole the british wave of rock and roll the british invasion uh with mm -hmm. the rolling stones you know led zeppelin you know all these bands that just came out in that time uh so i just started listening to, to more and more like that i think there was a phase in my life where in like elementary school it was like classic rock i used to love classic rock i still do love classic rock and mm -hmm. then when i hit middle school uh i was starting to get more into the metal scene 
um, because I had cousins who, when I would go over to their house, you know, they, they used to play guitar and all that, and I would listen to a lot of the music they would listen to, which was be like, you know, I'd hear Iron Maiden, Slayer, Megadeth, sure. you know, I'd hear all these bands that I, you know, would never even think of hearing, and, and I got into them. I think another big part of me liking rock and roll, and I think I could speak for a lot of kids like our age and stuff like that, is Guitar Hero. <laughs> I, oh, yeah, dude. Oh, for sure. For yeah. sure. I mean, for sure. Uh, for sure i i think that's what really invested me into bands like iron maiden and slayer and metallica um, yeah especially from guitar hero 3 and then when they when they came out with guitar hero metallica i was in love with that because mm -hmm. um, that was such a good good game and that introduced me into even more bands like you know um i got more into motorhead i mean I, obviously everyone knows motorhead from ace of spades but i i started diving more deep into motorhead as to like sure. the deeper cuts and and everything like that yeah but, you know, I mean, and then it wasn't till like I think my sophomore year of high school I finally made, which I think it's right here. No, no, not this one. The one that's a, I, I made a vest with all my bands because I'm a big dude for for starters, and <laughs> it's hard for me to find T-shirts my size to fit comfortably. So the way I thought to express myself was, you know what? I'll just make a vest, put all the bands that I like on it, and that just saves me from having to buy T-shirts. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, so yeah. For, for me, if I'm thinking way back to elementary school, the first bands that I remember getting quite into was actually Green Day yeah. and um, All American Rejects. Yep. Those were kind of my two gateway bands, which kind of makes sense because you, when I think of you and what you listen to, you're kind of more like traditional metal. You like your big fours, your Iron Maidens. Right. That, that's like your favorite stuff, right? right? But for me, my favorite stuff is more of like the the warp tour scene type of bands. Right. And when you actually go back and look at where we started, it actually makes a lot of sense that it turned out that way. <laughs> but um, American Idiot was like the first album that I owned, and my neighbor across the street had Move Along by All American Rejects, and this was like third grade. I remember I was that when they I were wore... doing the at the time the Bionicle commercials. Remember when they 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 yes. had Move Along? I loved Bionicle. Those were great, Bionicle. dude. They were so they were cinematic. so sick. So sick, yeah. And um. I remember I wore a Green Day American Idiot shirt. To, it was like third grade, and they told me I could never wear it to school again. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. I guess it was like the heart hand grenade was like violent. God. It was stupid. And then when I got into middle school, I started to get a little more into classic rock. Um, and I got into metalcore. I discovered a Treyu. That got me really into metalcore. I discovered 30 Seconds to Mars, who unfortunately suck now. <laughs> um and then high school, it was like I, I found bands like A Day to Remember and stuff. And 10th grade was when I had my big metalhead phase with like, I liked the Big Four and the Iron Maiden a lot more. Um, 11th grade, 12th grade, I kind of got into, a, I guess you just call it radio rock, you know, right. a little more. And I, and I always liked radio rock from like middle school, like Seether and Breaking Benjamin. But then I got into a little bit uh, more of that. And then college, like the start of college is when I got really into um, more pop punk bands um I, and again all throughout school i like you know the odd like simple plan blink 182 yellow card but then i just took a real dive into the genre in college and yeah yeah that 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 was a thing too i, I the funny you brought up green day that was also a big band that i really enjoyed growing up too i mean how, how old are you how old are you i'm 22 okay i'm i just turned 24 a couple months ago so we green day when we were kids in the early 2000s was yeah. like it was they the were band. so cool. Yeah. Skateboarding and punk was like way up here. <laughs> I, I remember actually it's funny that you bring up skateboarding. I, I remember playing the Tony Hawk games. Mm -hmm. Uh especially like Tony Hawk's Underground 2, Tony Hawk's American Wasteland, you know. Those are like the games I love and I, I hope to God one day they remaster all the Tony Hawk Underground series because uh what they did with Pro Skater One and Two was amazing. But mm -hmm. um yeah, I remember just listening to Green Day a lot. Holiday was one of the tracks on American Wasteland, um, and I remember just oh really? Yeah, I, I just remember okay. loving that song. And and every time yeah. I went to like Hollywood with my mom or something, I would always play Holiday because it always reminded me of Tony Hawk and everything. So no, I, that's, I, that's probably my favorite Green Day song. Yeah, Holiday is a great a great song, man. Nostalgia, the everything. Yeah, yeah. I I think that whole album, uh, American <laughs> Idiot, is just it, it's flawless in my opinion. And I, I think it defines our era very well. Yeah. It's just such a early 2000s. Well, I guess it was really like mid 2000s vibe. Like it, it just, it's like the perfect 2006 feel. Yeah. And 
it's funny you you mentioned the Tony Hawk games, man. Video game soundtracks back then used to slap, like yeah. the the MX Unleashed and like MX vs ATV, and obviously all the skateboarding games and the car racing games. All of these games had like these like post grunge soundtracks. Yeah. It was so interesting. It was around that it was around that time, like the early two thousands, where like uh, grunge was like slowly, I would say, going away, but it was still there. Um, mm-hmm. Because you know they ruled the '90s, and then in the early 2000s they were still trying to keep going, which I feel like they did. But then they were starting like that pop punk era was starting to come around even more, um, and starting to shed light in a lot of things. Um, but yeah, I, I agree. Those those early soundtracks, man, from those games are just <laughs> phenomenal, dude. Like yeah. I, I I think uh, now when I play like games like Grand Theft Auto V and stuff like that, like the one station i'm always on is channel x because i just love listening to the punk station oh yeah i remember that <laughs> yeah and you got like henry rollins being like the dj for for the station and it, it's it's just they have so so much good music on there and i think that's what really opened my eyes more to the punk scene which was my senior year of high school uh, i had a friend he was a greaser uh and he always uh he had the suavecito and and you know all that stuff so he really introduced me more into that punk scene. Obviously, you knew bands like the Ramones because of, you know, Blitz Greek Bop, I Want to Be Sedated. Everybody knew those songs. Um, That's a Guitar Hero one right there. Yeah. I Want to Be Sedated. That, exactly. I heard that from Guitar Hero. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't remember which one, but it was one of them. Yeah, I mean, and then obviously you, you had your, you know, Green Day was a big pop punk band coming up. Uh, a lot of people knew, everyone knew Green Day. Um, mm-hmm. And, and you, know, you know, you knew the little basic ones there, and I think it was not until my senior year that I really started – paying attention to the punk scene um my buddy got me into a band that did literally one album they're called operation ivy and i I remember listening to one track on the on the album called sound system and i just fell in love with that band since then (laughs) and i really started venturing off into more of the punk scene Uh, another big band that i remember hearing a lot of music from the tony hawk games was rancid you know they used to play like time bomb (laughs) and fall back down so oh yeah um, yeah you know, I mean, I think the punk scene for me, that that's what really started in senior year is what I really started to listen to more punk. And I really like the message with punk, especially when it reflects to like today's society. You know, the, the, the punk scene it's was still always, relevant as ever. Yeah, yeah it's just it. <laughs> they literally got on and spoke their voices about things, especially if you want to hear like a, a big like a, like a one that talks a lot about politics is uh, the Dead Kennedys. I mean, mm-hmm. everything they say to this day is like relevant. I'm just like, I can't believe how much your music has aged. Like, yeah, it's, a, it's like insane. the. It's interesting how it's changed because there are there are still bands out there that are very political, which is great, and um, and then like other pop punk bands are really relatable in other ways, like just in like terms of personal life and stuff. And that's something I've always looked for. Like that was one reason. Um, you know, I had my big metalhead uh, phase in tenth grade, but then. I kind of drifted away from it because it just the the lyrics didn't really quite connect with me as much. I right. just like the sound, and I, I still like metal. I'm I'm still a big Iron Maiden fan. They were my favorite band in tenth grade. I still love them. Yeah. But I just love how relatable, um, like the the 2010s pop punk bands are, and even on the metalcore side of things, there's a lot of bands out there that are very fresh, and they're just putting out stuff that I, I really relate to. And I think that adds a lot to music yeah. for me. Is you know, when I'm like singing along in the car and it's like I'm singing about my life, it's so cathartic, you know. That's the one thing I love doing too, especially like um, during haunt season. Uh, I, I purposely like will play, make a playlist of like punk and metal music that will kind of get me hyped up leading me to go to the mm. event. Um, mm-hmm. So if I'm taking a drive out to Universal Studios or if I'm going to Knott's or if I'm going to all these different uh, like um, haunts, it's it's metal and punk that I feel always fits that genre of of horror you know what i mean like <laughs> y- you can put any metal and punk uh album and it will fit a horror event it always will i don't know why i'm sure you you probably are but you familiar with ice nine kills yeah and their silver scream album yeah so in that that came out came out in 2018 and i remember um we went to the event one night and we were in line for halloween four which was not it, it, okay, it was my ninth out of ten houses that year. Yeah, um, it was good. It definitely wasn't one of my favorites, but mm. I was standing in line. I'm like, you know, what would be really sick is if I had like headphones and I could like listen to "Stabbing in the Dark" by Ice Nine Kills because that song's about Michael Myers' Halloween. Right. If I could like listen to that song 
for this walkthrough and I'm like seeing Michael Myers pop out during like different points in the song. That could be pretty cool. And my friend like reaches into his pocket. He's like, here's some headphones if you want to do it. And I was like, Oh, well, okay. <laughs> so I did. And that was my best walkthrough of that house. <laughs> nice. I mean, I, 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 I think, uh, yeah, I've always wanted to try that. It's put some songs on. Yeah. It was very, it's the only time I've ever done it, but it, it was very weird and, but it was cool. I, I mean, I wouldn't do it every time. It was like a one-time thing. Yeah. Do you want I think it has like to be like a tree? certain, like a song or something that has to relate to Like, I, I think I would have loved yeah. doing a full Killer Clowns walkthrough with the Dickies Killer Clowns playing in the background. Yeah, I don't know why I never thought to do that. Yeah. Um, um, but, yeah, and keep in mind, I'd already been through the house. I think it was like, that was probably like my fourth or fifth walk through it. So, it's not like I hadn't heard the sound already. Obviously, right. the first time you go through, you want to hear all the sounds and everything. But at this point, I already knew the house like very well. So I'm like, let's just like do something a little different. And yeah. it, it was quite cool. It was very cool. Um, so obviously, we're both huge music fans. What was the first uh, concert you ever went to? Um, it would have been Buddy Guy at the House of Blues. But I was like probably six or seven years old. Right. <clears throat> so my dad took me to see him he took me to see bb king he took me to see eric clapton those those three concerts happened but i was so young that i i didn't really choose to go um first time i chose to go was the summer after ninth grade uh me and my friend and his dad uh, drove to atlanta in the summer that was iron maiden and alice cooper nice at the um the forget what the amphitheater was called, but it was whatever amphitheater is like just outside of Atlanta. That's awesome. And, uh, it was, a, it was a good show. They played, um, that was the made in England tour 2012. So they played a lot of stuff from seven sun. Yeah. Which is my favorite album of theirs. Yeah. yeah. So it was like the perfect, um, you know, it's funny too. Cause uh, I love maidens early, early stuff too. And, but it, it, I feel like with Bruce Dickinson, the guy, and, and of course, um, the bass player, they they both know how to write music and mm -hmm. even when their later albums came they weren't they weren't bad a lot of people actually mm -hmm. like a lot of the later albums too i hear that a lot yeah. of the time i go to shows yeah the only uh maiden albums that didn't really do it for me were um the ones where dickinson was gone i believe wasn't it blaze bailey was it the first what like the name? first two albums no that was um that was oh, a like you talking about the middle of there yeah it was like virtual 11 right and that what was the other album he was on I don't know. I'm just going to Google their Discord. Because they have like 15 or 16 albums, don't yeah, they? Yeah, not to mention every single live album they always release. That's true. I don't count those. <laughs> but like if I'm think if, if like I'm talking like my favorite album. Yeah. I don't really if if like I'm going to talk count. my favorite album, it's going to be, uh, honestly, it's going to be one that a lot of people are going to be like, oh, that's like a simple one. I really love Number of the Beast. Yeah. See, but that, that would be my number two. Yeah. So it's like that and, and Power Slave, I'd probably put it through. Power Slave's another good one. Um, Power Slave. I also the X, really, wait okay it's the i think it's the x factor and virtual 11 were the ones okay 1995 1998 yeah Sounds where about bruce right, dickinson was hiatus. like yeah where bruce was gone and then he came back for brave new world right which is pretty good yeah. i think dance of death was also very underrated yeah i thought that was really good it, I, it, the title track is one of my favorite maiden songs so back in the day before i had spotify you know and i had a job and made money um, <laughs> when I was still uh, YouTube p copying and pasting songs and making them to MP3 files to put onto my iPod. I don't know if you, everybody still does that. Um, I, I use Frostwire. Yeah. I use Frostwire. Uh, dude, back in the day, it was LimeWire, dude. I know. Everyone used LimeWire. I used Frostwire for some reason. I, I used LimeWire back in the day, and yeah. then eventually uh, LimeWire just wasn't cutting it for me. So then I found out the whole YouTube to MP3 thing, and I'm like, oh, this is better. It's better quality. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it's funny you bring up Dance of Death because that was like I remember that was one album that uh, every time I'd look it up on YouTube, like back in the day, I could not find anything for that album, and I wanted that whole album mm. onto my iPod, and I just couldn't find it. <laughs> and now it's like it's everywhere. Yeah, now it's like music is so easy to find and it's so accessible. Yeah. And now I'm like, dang, I don't know how I ever lived without Spotify Premium. Right. I don't know how I survived without it. Like, I, I mean, it's crazy. Cause you know, we, like you, like you said, we're uh, kind of the same age roughly. Right. So we, we always grew up with technology, Yeah. but um, it's just interesting how it's uh, changed and gotten better over time. Like 
so many things now that I used to do that I can't, I'm like, wow, how did I even deal with that? Yeah. Uh, but I, I got Spotify. Jeez, I was on the Spotify train early, like literally like Christmas 2011. Right. Spotify account. And uh, this is before Spotify premium was a thing, I believe. So there, there were like ads and you couldn't do anything about it. <laughs> but that's just how I would listen. I'd be playing MW3 and I'd have my laptop set up on my table. Dude, fucking have MW3. My, have my Black Veil Brides playing or whatever while I'm playing MW3. I miss that. I miss that. Dude, those <laughs> nights were great. I did the same thing. I'd hook up the laptop or I had like a little, uh, I don't remember if you remember those little iPod docks. You put your mm-hmm. iPod in and it charges <laughs> yeah. it, and you can play it into the speakers. Like that was. I cool. never had one, but they were sick. Yeah, yeah I had a I had a cheap one, but it it it, it did me justice, you know. So yeah, um, I mean, at the time, you're not really worried about like sound quality and stuff no. like that. You're no. just like, yeah, it's coming, it's coming. Just out, play so it loud fun. so I can <laughs> play my games. <laughs> um, yep. Yeah, I, I do that every now and then. Actually, I'll, I'll catch myself playing Warzone and I'll throw on some music in the background. Um, mm-hmm. But then it gets really intense, and I have to pause the song real quick just to really focus. And then yeah, because uh, it's, it's interesting. I I don't really play Call of Duty anymore. Uh, I usually stick to like the the big, huge single player uh, story type games. And then right. for multiplayer, I have a few things. I, I'm a big Rocket League guy. Play a lot okay. of Rocket League. And then I've been playing that Rogue Company game. It's uh, newer. Okay. I've heard of it. And uh, but those games are sweaty so i can't really play music <laughs> but, i'm usually playing with someone and we're like communicating like you know go here go here do this yeah back in the day in like ninth grade we just sit down play call of duty talk about our crushes and listen to bullet for my valentine sounds about and that right. was our that, that was our afternoon yeah. <laughs> every every day uh, it never got old <laughs> yeah i mean dude i i, I love music i think the, the very first concert i ever went to was uh I did Ringo Starr and his all-star band because I wanted to <laughs> see a Beatle one. in person so bad. That's crazy. Did um, you ever end up seeing Paul? No. I And I had ever? the opportunity to do so last year when he was at Dodger Stadium. And <clears throat> I, I didn't want to go alone uh, because my grandma was like, I'll buy you a ticket for your birthday. You can go see him. But I really wanted to go with her, but she had already moved out to Washington. So I was like, mm. I don't want to go by myself. And I, I, you should have. Yeah, I deeply regret that now because yeah. Ringo Starr did show up that concert. Oh no! And I was like, no, <laughs> man. I I go to shows by myself pretty often. Yeah, like it's it's just chill. Like I, I've been to so many that I'm just like, I'll just go and I, I kind of like it sometimes because it's just like, well, you can just t- you can tackle this however you want. You can show up when you want. Yeah, leave when you want. Stand where you want. Because I go sometimes to shows with people who maybe only go to like one or two a year, and like they want to get up close and be in the crowd. But I'm like. I like to get as close as I can without being too squished. That's right. kind of my no, that's kind of my mantra. <laughs> I I've been to here's two concerts that I went to where I I was just like fucking it was nuts. Um, mm-hmm. The first one I got to the very front, and I actually got some memorabilia from that show too. Um, but I was in the very front for the first time the Misfits ever played at the Forum when I saw them for the first time, um, mm-hmm. and I was at the very front. I was on the side where Jerry was playing bass uh, and Glenn would come down and, and touch everyone and, and sing with everyone, which was really cool. I actually caught Doyle's. I, I, I am a big thing. I have a big, you can, you can kind of see it briefly, like right there, but I, I collect guitar picks at concerts. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I, I pretty much, I, I, it's right there, but I, 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 I built this like metal thing or kind of like tinfoil thing. And then I, I, Tape it on the pick, and then I put who it's by and what day I got it at. Uh, mm-hmm. And I caught Doyle Wolfgang von Frankenstein's pick. It's like broken in nice. half because he broke it. Um, <laughs> but no, I, and then that was so that was a, a very stressful one because when you're in the front, people are pushing and you get squished. I, yeah, yeah, um, it's rough. That sucked. And then the, the the second time I had an uncomfortability in in a concert was when I saw Slayer for the, for the first time at the Forum, and the show started. I was in the I was in the pit. And then all of a sudden, like, I got out for a little bit to kind of rest. But then I was getting shoved and pushed. I just, like, what I did was I, I pitted for a little bit longer. And then I just went to the back and just enjoyed the rest of the show in the back. I was like, I'm too yeah. tired. I'm too sweaty. I can't do this no more. <laughs> yeah. I, I've been up close many times. And uh, I'll go in the pit every now and then. I'm pretty, like, I'm very tall. But I'm kind of built like a street lamp or something. Right. So uh, if I go in the pit, I get knocked around pretty good. But um, I'll go in now and then. Uh, if I'm feeling it, usually at like pop punk shows, so it's not quite as like Dude, violent. 
I'll be honest. But... <laughs> punk shows for me are a little bit more bad, worse than freaking metal shows. Well, if it's like punk, like like a suicidal tendencies kind of. Oh, punk, dude, yeah, and I and I've seen I them many see times. <laughs> but I'm I'm talking like a like a, like a state champs pit, where it's more. Right. It's like 2010s pop punk, and it's like more just kind of casual pushing, I guess you could say. Yeah. Um, the first metal show I ever went to, actually, too, was uh, Iron Maiden. I uh, I saw really them, saw them at the Forum 2016. I got tickets uh, for my graduation. I got tickets. My grandma hooked it up that year. I got tickets to see them for graduation, and I also got tickets to go see Guns N' Roses. Nice. So, nice. yeah, Iron Maiden was, like, the first heavy metal show I ever went to, and that was when they were doing the Book of Souls World Tour, and mm-hmm. I, I, I had so much fun. I enjoyed it. I mean... <laughs> Hearing hearing Trooper, hearing Number of the Beast, hearing all these iconic songs live was just Book of Souls. Not my favorite album, but no, I still. I wanted of... to go to that same tour, but um, well, actually, it may have been the the second Book of Souls tour that happened like a year or two later. Yeah, when they came but back around was, for a second round. Yeah, but the the show here was in Sunrise, right? Which is in uh, like South Beach, so it was like three and a half, four hours away, and I was like, I just. And it was like the middle of the week. It was like a Wednesday. I was like, I just can't do it. That I've done. Uh, I think the furthest I've went to a show so far is uh, uh, San Diego, um, and that mm-hmm. was because, for starters, I love Metallica. Huge Metallica fan. Um, loved them for the longest time. And when they when they released Hardwired to Self Destruct, they announced the the Worldwide tour. So they yep. were at two locations in California. They were at the Rose Bowl in Pasadena, which is really close to me. And they yeah, I was going to say, that's way closer. Yeah, and they were in San Diego. So I went to both shows. Um, okay. Because the Rose Bowl one, I, I went to because I was like, yeah, that, that might be my only one chance. I, I really want to see them. Sat in, like, the fucking rafters, but I it still enjoyed every minute of that show. <laughs> um, the second time, uh, I was supposed to get Alice Cooper tickets for my birthday, but I told my dad, can you just buy me a pit ticket for Metallica? At Petco Park in San Diego, he's like, "Yeah." So he bought me a pit ticket for that, and that was probably the better out of the two shows that I went to because I was like really close to the stage, and I caught uh, Hetfield and Hammett's pick. Um, I, I I just had, and they played Creeping Death in that set, so I was just mm, I, I that's a good that. one. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I didn't get to yeah. do that in the Pasadena show, but yeah, I drove all the way out. I think I woke up at like ten in the morning. We left my house. Went, it was me and my buddy. We went all the way to San Diego. Uh, it took us about two, two, two and a half hours to get there. And then, um, yeah, we just kind of chilled till the show started. We were just waiting in the general mission line because we wanted to get as close as possible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm not I'm not a big Metallica fan, but I did enjoy them in, like, that 10th grade metalhead phase I was talking right. about. And uh, I did go to that tour. Um, they came to Orlando at the Citrus Bowl, and it was, like, the middle of summer, so it was really hot. Um, and I had mainly gone cause a, it's like Metallica. It's, even though I'm not a big fan of them, it's like, they're just such a massive band to say that you've seen, you know? Right. And then, uh, obviously there are tons of throwbacks that I enjoyed from like, uh, early in high school, but I'm also a huge fan of Avenged Sevenfold. I knew you were going to go there. <laughs> and a huge fan of Volbeat. So that I was like the Volbeat. They were, for me, it was Gojira. Yeah. The, the, op- the first band changed. Yeah. Um, Gojira is good though. Gojira, Gojira was good. good. I've, um, I've seen them a couple times. They're very good. You're gonna hate um, me for this, but I'm not. I don't like Avenged Sevenfold. Really? <laughs> I I like the only things I like that they've done is anything they've done for Call of Duty, like the zombie songs and and mm. some of the songs they've done for Call of Duty. But other than that, I'm I just I I think they're too overhyped. But that's just me. Well, I wouldn't I wouldn't deny that they're overrated. I I I don't think overrated means bad. Um, it just means like. I mean, they're one of the biggest rock bands on the planet. They are, and I'll um, give them that. They they are very they are very talented so, people at that. I, I yeah. will give them that. And I, I and, think and I, I get them, their. I like them better when they had their first drummer, who sadly passed away. Yeah, but, he was great. He was great. Yeah. And uh, I mean, I think some of their more recent albums haven't quite stacked up. I think Nightmare was the last one that was really great. Yeah. And then the what was the one in like twenty fourteen? The Hail to the King that was okay. And the stage was okay, but um, I love seeing them live. They're very nostalgic for me as well. I was, I was a fan in middle school, but I was a big fan in like ninth, tenth, eleventh, pretty much all high school. I was, they were one of my big bands in high school. But 
I remember I got like nosebleeds for that show as well. Right. Because it was just so expensive. And uh, then my friend, um, he got upgraded to like the, the pit somehow. And uh, he let me have his lower bowl seat because he had gotten the, the pit. So I ended up in like the lower bowl for that show nice. somehow. So you got like an upgrade seat too. <laughs> yeah, I got a good view. And uh, it was good, man. I Like I said, Metallica is not one of my favorites, but the stage production was wild and it was yeah. – it was a spectacle, that's for sure. And one of my biggest concert achievements is I got home from that show with that many people in 35 minutes. Yes. No, I've <laughs> done I've done that uh, where you leave a concert and just – because it's always the, the worst leaving a concert. Yeah, it can be tough. It is. It and uh, we did that with, um, with System of a Down when I went with my buddies. Um, and we were leaving, and we left, I think, like halfway through the last encore song. Yeah, um, that's always a good play. Yeah, which I didn't want to because I wanted to hear that song, but I, I was hearing it on the way out. So, uh, mm-hmm. but yeah, you know, we left halfway through and we were we we zoomed out of the freaking venue like <laughs> no problem. Yeah. Um, but I think I want to say the greatest concert I've been to a lot of fun concerts. I really have, and I, I'm super blessed for that. Like I think it was 2016, 2017. I was just blowing my money on concerts. Yeah. But that was before. That was those are the years prior to Nights of Horror. So I was not having to go to all these haunt events, not having to, you know, but now it's like, I, I pick and choose where I want to go. Obviously right now there's nothing. So I can't, I mean, I'm saving yeah. money right now. But, I saved a lot of money this year. I will say. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, a couple of bands I was tours. I was supposed to see to this year. were going to be, or last year was going to be, uh, I was going to go, I was going to go see the mega, the hell mega tour. Cause mm-hmm. that had a good, lineup of bands i loved every one of those bands even the very like the the interrupters huge fan of those guys yeah they're good i they're love good. the interrupters um, great live i saw them at a festival and... i've seen those guys honestly i've seen those like guys like eight or nine times really i, I saw I, them I, at a festival la- or two years ago now i guess that's how i got introduced to them and it's ironic how i got introduced to them because they were, they were doing uh doing a cover of sound system and i was like oh love this song so and i love the way <laughs> you guys did it um yeah they're good but yeah, I was gonna go to the Hell Omega tour. That was one big summer one I was gonna check out. Uh, uh, you know, like Interrupters, uh, Fall Out Boy, Weezer, and Green Day. So I was like, dude, that's a stacked lineup. Mm-hmm. And then I was gonna do uh, Pearl Jam. Pearl Jam was gonna come at the Forum at the end of the year, and uh, I had never seen Pearl Jam in my life. Yeah, so I haven't either. I, yeah. I really wanted to see Pearl Jam. Um, a lot of good songs with that band. Um, yeah. But the last concert i i did before the the pandemic was uh sublime with rome so that was fun yeah mine was uh the wonder years there you go at the uh the end of february that was my last concert yeah um but i had so many that ended up getting canceled um unfortunately that i would have probably seen pearl jam but they weren't coming here i I have seen soundgarden i actually saw soundgarden like three weeks before chris cornell died oh dude so you got lucky to see chris cornell then yeah and then i i've seen owls and chains Nice. But um, never Pearl Jam. Uh, unfortunately, that tour wasn't coming here, but I had tickets for like uh, a couple festivals that I can't, like I think three festivals that ended up not happening. Right. I had a floor ticket for Slipknot, A Day to Remember, Under Oath, and Code Orange. I've seen Slipknot and Code Orange. They do yeah. good shows. Yeah. yeah. And then just a bunch of other just random shows here and there. I either had a ticket to or I was going to get a ticket to. It was it was tough. I was like, I really thought that oh, you know, by the end of the year, hopefully everything will be normal. But obviously, it didn't quite happen. That way. Yeah, I'm hoping for a better year this year. Maybe with the uh, I I myself am not gonna get the vaccine, but I want to see how it is treated on other people um, first before I make a very big decision if I want to get it or not. But I want to wait a couple of months to see what this vaccine does to people. Um, yeah, I'm gonna get it like right away, uh, but. Like you said, I, I do think there's some light at the end of the tunnel now, at least. Yeah. Like, at least we can see that, I mean, the obviously the numbers right now are terrible, but, yeah. um, you know, at least there's some sort of, you know, something to look at and say, okay, there's the end. We can kind of see it now. Yeah. Um, it's funny that you bring up, you know, concerts and stuff, because I think Ticketmaster or someone, like, mid-pandemic said that if, when they start doing concerts again, they're going to require you to have, be vaccinated or get a COVID test to attend the mm-hmm. show which i'd be in favor of like yeah same here i mean i you know it's it'd be so easy you know yeah to just 
obviously if you're vaccinated, it's pretty easy to just supply proof and then getting a COVID test, pretty simple. Just if you want to go to the show, just, just get a test. That week of man, that like Wednesday yeah, or Tuesday and just go get tested. Yep. You're two or three days. By the time the show comes, you got your results. Yep. Yep. Yeah, For man. sure. Um, another thing that we're both really interested in, obviously, uh, I mean, we just spent like a good 30 minutes talking about music, which I know it's hard to stop. No, it I know. I, 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 I think that that was one of the things I definitely want to talk to you about with the show. Cause I don't, I know with our group chat that we have on Instagram, you know, everybody talks about different things. So I, I knew if I got all one-on-one with you, talk about music that we can go all day mm-hmm. about it. Um, <laughs> we are big, uh, Horror Nights fans, obviously. I think that's what one of the reasons uh, that unites us as the Booze Bros, because we're all Horror Nights fans, we're all content creators. Um, what was the first year you went to Horror Nights, and what made you want to keep going back? That, that's a that's a story I really enjoy. Uh, <laughs> so, my first year was 2017. Nice. Um, pretty, it, not long ago, right? Um, for how big of a fan I am, and how much ab- about the history that I've learned it's like a little strange that I'm such like a new attender, (laughs) but actually, um, you know, I've lived here my whole life. So Halloween Horror Nights advertisements on TV, it's like second nature. Some of them scared me as a kid, gave me nightmares. Right. But the first year the event really got put on my radar was 2007. Um, And that was because uh, they were doing the Carnival of Carnage that year here in Orlando. Uh, So Jack was like the ringleader. And then, the three big IP houses, they had Friday the 13th, Elm Street, and uh, Texas Chainsaw. Was that the one where he was reading the fortunes in the commercial? Uh, yeah, with like the, the cards. And yeah, it's like, he goes, so what's one. my fate? Yeah. He goes, you don't have one. I, I put out a, a funny tweet today about that where it was like a picture of the cards and it was like, it just got my tarot reading for 2021. <laughs> <laughs> but but no, um, that commercial, I was like, wow, that's really cool. And I, I really liked Freddy Krueger as a kid. It took me a while to really get into horror because I, I didn't like jump scares for a very long time. I, I liked the idea of kind of creepy, unsettling things, but I didn't like getting jump scared. So that was the biggest reason I never went because every year I would like see the lineup and be like, oh, that looks cool. That looks cool. That looks cool. I'm still not going, but that looks sick. <laughs> and um, I had a couple chances. I remember my high school girlfriend in like 2013, 2014 really wanted me to go, but I was like, nope kind of wish I did now obviously but 27 I, I went because I, I started making friends in the theme park community and I realized that it was not just about like the scares but it was like this big social gathering with everybody right. so I was like you know what I'll try it I'll try it yeah and uh, I tried to swing a one-day ticket in 2016 couldn't financially do it so I went 27 first house was The Shining and I was like <laughs> I was like, okay, I finally did it after all these years. I, I have now gone through a Halloween Horror Nights house, but I'd be fine if I had never did that again. Cause holy crap. <laughs> but, but then all my friends were like, we got to get in line for American Horror Story. And I'm like, well, I'm not going to stand out here by myself. So then I went through and then I was like, okay, yeah, let's just keep going through houses. This is sweet. Yeah. So first, it only took me two houses to catch, to catch the bug. To catch the bug. <laughs> and that's the, the rest yep. of history. So obviously another, another good, buddy of yours zombie chris good buddy of ours um how did that friendship come into fruition was that through the 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 theme park community yeah uh i kind of forget when it started i guess probably like 20 early 2017 maybe because we were already like pretty close by the time hhn 27 rolled around um i stayed in the in the hotel with them opening weekend. Right. I think, or was that 28? I don't remember 29. I don't remember. I think it was 20. I think it was my first year I stayed uh, with him and uh, no. Yeah. I mean, it, it wasn't anything crazy. It was just, Oh, there's a dude on Twitter in the theme park community. And we just messaged one day and just became friends. And that's about it. <laughs> the rest is history, man. Yeah. Cause I, I know for the longest in the beginning of 2020 you guys were doing some like some live stream podcasts every now and then um, yeah which i yeah. was enjoying uh so you should bring those <laughs> back um yeah but no yeah I, I remember that's actually the first time i i kind of heard of you was uh through those podcasts you know i i was like 
okay, Chris is doing. I knew Chris was. I, I talked to Chris, and I knew who he was. But then um, I, I started hearing your voice on them, and I'm like, oh, shit, I, I don't know who this guy is. This guy is his co-host. I'm like, okay. And I started listening to what you guys had to say, and I, I was just kind of hooked on. So every time you guys did a live podcast, I would just always tune in. Um, but, I, yeah, I mean, I, I think this community is just a a, a blessing, in my opinion. Um, I, I think I've really made a lot of friends in this community. I've met a lot of people in this community. Um, and I, I just would not take it back for anything, honestly. Like, Yeah, for sure. And I, I uh, complain about the theme park community sometimes. Right. Um, just because of, I mean, I'm not obviously going to start, you know, going off about the theme park community, but mm-hmm. you know, sometimes you see some things on like Twitter, some people fighting about stupid stuff, right? Stuff like that. I'm just like, uh, but ultimately it, it has made me a lot of really good friendships. Um, and now I've even made friends with people like you who are on the West coast. Right. And, uh, that was because like zombie curse asked me, is like, Hey, do you want me to like add you to this group chat? And I'm like, uh, I guess so. <laughs> And, oh, yeah. uh, I didn't know any of you except Wash. Yeah, we had, but, you know, yeah. Scott, me, and John are all on the West Coast. Everyone else is on the East Coast. Um, the plan is, I think, for obviously, uh, we're hoping HHN 20 or HHN 30 comes uh, this year. And the plan mm-hmm. is for all of us to go and, and meet up and hang out. Yeah. Uh, because it's hey, that'd be great. It's been something we've been talking about for some time now. And I think mm-hmm. the only one that's gotten to accomplish that so far is Scott to actually yeah. go over there and hang out with everybody. Um, mm-hmm. Which every time I saw his Instagram, I would fucking yell at my phone like, God damn it. I can't afford it right now. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, that's the, that's the plan. Uh, if all goes well, uh, I'm, I'm hitting HHN 30. Um, and if it, if it, for some reason on the West coast, doesn't end well where there's no HHN, but there is on the East Coast, then I'm definitely hitting up HHN 30. Oh, yeah, then there's no reason. Yeah. Like, I might even stay out there the whole week just so I can go fucking all four days and just get my my kick in right there. Sure. You know? Yeah, I, um, in terms of travel, again, obviously, I don't want to commit to anything because who knows right. what's going to happen. Um, I think it's a little easier to maybe try to commit to something for the fall because of the light at the end of the tunnel now. Right. But, um still not going to hard commit to anything but um my best friend lives in north carolina he's going to get married he's hoping this year again it it all is totally dependent on the situation right but um i'd probably go to carowinds because he's about like an hour from carowinds so finally get to check out that park um, as long as it's within the operating season when he gets married um if it's during halloween season maybe i'll check out their halloween event just to Say so you've been to one. another out of state Halloween event. Exactly, because I've I've never done that. I've only been to literally just HHN. Um and then I did I wanted to get like a full year of HHN under my belt before I tried another haunt. Right. And uh, twenty eighteen I was gonna do Hollow Scream, but it fell through. And then twenty nineteen I did the Dark Horizon. And this year I did uh Scream and Stream. So I'm starting to do more. What'd you, uh, I, what'd you think of Dark Horizon? It was cool because um, it was so cheap. We got a ticket for like 25 bucks. I mean, for 25 bucks, like the the ghost ship house was, it, it was okay. But the uh, the voodoo house and the, the other one, the Florida serial killer house, both were quite, quite good, especially voodoo. Voodoo was a little more the voodoo priestess. intricate. That was a, yeah. a character from Dark Harbor that actually opened mm-hmm. that event. So, yeah, that was cool. Which was cool. And, uh, no, I mean, I liked it. It was it was totally different because that was my first non-HHN haunt. Right. Totally different because of the, like, interaction in the houses and stuff. Yeah. Like, actors are actually talking to you. Yeah. It's that, like, a sound trigger. That's what I around. liked about uh, th- this company. Uh, I believe it's 13th Floor Productions. Um, they really are, are good with interactivity. Um, if you look at Dark Horizon, Dark uh, Harbor, and even uh, Haunted Hayride, um, especially in 2019, Haunted Hayride was just so amazing with interactivity that I, I was just like a kid in a candy shop. <laughs> I just was <laughs> loving every minute of it. And Dark Harbor, too, you have the, the uh, if you ever look, get a chance, I mean, the captain at Dark Harbor is so funny, dude. That guy, uh, we've actually had him on the podcast before. Uh, amazing person. And. 
he honestly is just the funniest person you can like ever meet. <laughs> so, no, I, yeah, I love I'm, that. I'm definitely hoping for a a more full hot season this year. Um, we can only hope. We can only hope. Yeah. Um, it was definitely weird this year. Just it was definitely a weird void. And I, I know you did some home haunts, so you kind of yeah. No, we had an interesting haunt season out here, nonetheless. Uh, there was a couple major things going on as far as the haunt world, but a lot of it was uh, home haunts and yard displays. Which I gotta say, man, I was really blown away. Yeah, people people can do some crazy stuff, yeah. but I mean, it, it's just nice that you know. I think, for example, like Scream and Stream. I know some of our friends in the the chat were very critical of it, but for me, I, I totally get that. But just to have something fun this year right. or while well, last year was just like, I couldn't really be that harsh on it because they did something safe that was like fun, you know? Right. And it was like something to fill the void of not having the traditional hunt season. Yeah. So I wasn't too hard on them. I respected that a lot. That, and I that's appreciate how, it. That's exactly how I was this last haunt season was like, at least I'm getting something. So I'm not going to complain about anything I get really. Yeah. Um, I'm going to try to, and find you guys can't point. even, yeah, you guys haven't even had the parks open. Like no. I know multiple people who have lost their jobs at um, Disneyland. It's just, it's brutal. Yeah. It's it, brutal. I, I, I think they furlough or like, yeah, I think they furlough like a hundred thousand people or something like that. Yeah. Um, which is nuts. And I know, some of them are just straight up laid off now. I, I know they have the fucking money to keep their employees, dude. Like, well, Knotts is keeping their employees. Yeah, right. Like, uh, so yeah. you tell me Disney doesn't, but Knotts does? Yeah, I don't. I don't think so. Disney think so. alone in the first two phases of Marvel made seven billion dollars. <laughs> and you're telling me you don't have that money to pay your employees? Uh, Star Wars made them a couple billion dollars. Marvel overall probably made them tens of billions of dollars. Well, how about Disney Plus subscriptions? Disney Plus <laughs> subscriptions is probably another billion. So sure, sure. It's like I, I get it's a tough economic time, but like they are, they're Disney. Yeah, you know they they have so much, um, and even even if they kept their employees on and p paid them a reduced salary, like just something to to help them get by, yeah. and maybe like a guarantee that they can get their jobs back. I think a lot of them actually were saying that. Uh, because I know I know a person that worked at Disney that they said that their job would still be waiting for them to, when they came when they opened. Mm -hmm. So I think I think Disney did promise a lot of, if not all their employees that they had to let go right now, uh, that they can still have their job back when if they want to come back they yeah. still get it if they okay. if they want to come back they have first dibs on on their job so which they they absolutely should yeah they absolutely should for sure yeah, yeah. um but it, it's definitely a, a weird time man and. I don't know. I, I we'll see where this year goes. Um, until then, I have a lot of things on this channel to keep me busy. So, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah, I I'll try to keep busy. I'll try, but I mean, um, I guess I'm just trying to get like a little job going. But um, I, I mean, I have like a gig right now, but it's not really like a sustainable job. So, right. but but I live with someone who's high risk, so kind of working non-remotely is not really an option at the moment. Right. So I've applied to some remote jobs. We'll see how they go. And other than that, I'm just kind of playing video games and listening to music. And I just finished with college. So that's now fun. that's off the table. <laughs> so now, now that I have that to, you know, not use as a distraction. <laughs> now you, uh, now you're like, I need a job so I can pay off these damn student loans. <laughs> <laughs> um, so. no, man, I, I, I think I, uh, we had a, I think we had a, overall for the channel, we had a good 2020. Uh, the year itself wasn't the best, but I think channel-wise it was a good thing. And I just am extremely grateful for, uh, I think overall just our, our little group of bros, man. Cause I, yeah, I, it's been, it's been fun getting to know everyone. I, I think if it wasn't year. for this pandemic, dude, we would have never been as close as we are right now. Yeah, I could, I could see that. I mean, everyone says like everything happens for a reason and, I don't necessarily believe that, but I do believe that good can come out of any bad situation. Yeah. You know, and a lot of times it does if you just um, hang in there long enough to get through it. Yeah. Um, it always gets better and there's always something you can take away from it that's uh, positive or helps you grow. So right. I think, you know, getting to know new friends is one of the 
the few good things that came out of 2020, but you still have to recognize it as something good that happened. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. No, it was, it was definitely, um, like I said, I, I don't think any of us would be as close as we are right now because uh, I could tell you this, like Scott was always busy going to the theme parks. Mm-hmm. Um, Everyone's everyone would, would have been way more busy. Everyone was doing <laughs> way less stuff, time you know? to talk. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> now we have the time, you know, and, and still managing upload schedules is, is cool. But, um, mm-hmm. Connor, where can they find you on social media, my, my, my dude, if they, if they want to hit you up? Well, I've got uh, YouTube. Uh, it's Connor FL, just C-O-N-N-E-R. Yes, sir. FL. Um, I pretty much <laughs> upload sparsely currently because my channel is mostly like theme park blogs and concert blogs, but neither of those are really happening right now. So mm-hmm. um, not really uploading much, but I will eventually start uploading frequently again. Um, and then just Connor W, I think it's 96 on Twitter. I'm not even sure. I'm going to look. <laughs> but, yeah, I'm pretty active on Twitter. I, I tweet here and there. So, yeah, Connor W 96 There you go. And then uh, before we part, I do have a question for you. Yes, sir. And that is, uh, where is my plaque? You know what? I was going to bring that up. <laughs> I, I owe you that. I know that. Um, the, 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 he was the, the Maze winner, Treatment winner of the Maze, Maze Treatment, Treatment Season 1. <laughs> And that was something I was going to bring up, and it's completely slipped my mind. But, no, I still owe you. Um, what I'm thinking what I'll do now is uh, since we've already announced we're doing a season two, a good way to start season one is like a message from you, and you have your plaque. <laughs> yeah, I, I still owe you. Don't think I forgot. It's always in the back of no, my mind. No, I know. I was just messing with you a little bit. but uh, You're going to get it. Trust me. Like, I'm not. Yeah. I, I think season... that was uh, you. I... That, okay, we'll, we'll talk about that before we leave, but. You stole the show in that show. And <laughs> I still like, can't even really believe I won. Yeah, you were honest. like the <laughs> underdog of that show, and you just yes. blew us away with some of your ideas, man. And it, it was nuts to watch you design, dude, and, and make more. And I'm still trying to figure out how we're going to do season two, but I, I, I may have an idea for season three already. That, that shows you how far advanced I'm already in it. <laughs> um, and it, it may involve teams. So Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I kind of ended up on a team anyway because – um, and this was like, you, you allowed it, but yeah, I guess my, my whole thing was like that, that first maze I pitched was like the alien one, right? The original alien abduction, yeah. the, the invasion, the yeah. original based on a scare zone. And that's just an idea I've had since I saw that scare zone. So I'm just like, oh, I'll just put it out into the universe. That was pretty much my logic. And I, I was going up against Chris and I, I knew that was a strong concept. So I knew I could potentially win, but then when I got to the second round, I was like, I mean, I don't really have uh, an idea. <laughs> that was like my one idea. So that's that's why I went with uh, I went with Fright Night because that's like, oh, you know, there's a movie that I'd love to see. And then I, I was surprised I made it past that round. Well, you sold me with Fright Night, dude. I've been wanting to see that at Horror Nights yeah, for so long, too. <laughs> for sure. And that was against, um, wasn't it Losh? I think it was against. Or no, it was against someone from TLEV. Yeah. Uh, right? Josue. Yeah, yeah. Which I was and surprised then, that no one from TLV won. <laughs> yeah. And we got to the final, and that's when I came up against Hauntline. So I was like, okay, well, I mean, it's Hauntline. So and, I'm going to do it a little bit different for season two, which I think I should have done it like this from the start, but uh, we're going to let the fans vote on it. So mm, okay. it's more fair, and it's out of our hands. We're still going to do the same format how we do it and give our opinions and, and who we – who's we liked and everything but ultimately it's going to be the fans decision as to who wins every uh every fight so what i'm thinking about doing is i think uh pretty soon maybe i I think i i think i'm slated i have that slated to premiere in july or june may treatments yeah uh i have it slated for uh july July 2nd is season two starts. Um, and that's an announcement of its own right there. Um, <laughs> but yeah, July 2nd, it's slated to start. So I'm thinking, I think like maybe in um, like May, I may start having, I may announce who I'm going to have. And then in June, have everyone film everything. So I have the first four episodes done. And then while I'm editing, I can tell everybody, okay. This is how it's going to go. And as I release them, I'll be like, okay, you won this one. That way in the next four weeks, I can tell everybody, okay, you won. So this is just make your video. You won, make your video. You won, make, you know what I mean? So then mm-hmm. I can have all of them ready again. And then uh, it's going to be, I think, seven episodes. 
Uh, we're doing eight participants. That's already a lot of info I've given out, and that's not that's not we're not even starting <laughs> that till July. So, <laughs> um, yeah. But I, I have not picked the participants yet. I, I'm I'm still debating who I want to see. If I want to see some returning champs, if I want to see some returning people to redeem themselves. Um, that's true. I think uh, hmm, who would I put on there? I don't know because. Who Obviously, knows? I was the, the the defending champ. It would make sense for me to go back, but at the same time, I don't yeah, really have any more ideas. We even might make you a guest judge this year, just because you were the. Oh, champ. that actually, I would like that better. That would actually be yeah. really fun. I'd like to do that. Be a um, guest judge. But I think Zombie Chris should get another shot. Zombie Chris, uh, I think we should get like everyone he, who's lost and like put them in and give them another shot. Especially, especially the people who lost in the first round. Yeah, the first round. Let's get all the first, first rounds round. in, and let's have them go against each other, and then. We'll get uh, all the second rounds in. Have them go against each other. Mm -hmm. So, because Chris, like he, you know, he had a really good production, and he ended up editing uh, my other videos because of the production. Yeah, because I'm not really much of an editor, so I just had him do it. So I think he should get a second chance for sure. May streaming but... season two, man, coming July 2021. <laughs> And talking uh, about it in January. Talking about it in January. <laughs> haunt, haunt season is never a, a thing that you just don't talk about. <laughs> it's always oh, yeah. in the discussion. It, the, the plan is we're going to wrap up uh, season one of uh, Knights of Horror Factor Fiction, and then we're going to go into season uh, two of Maze Treatments. We're also wrapping up season one of Shoot the Shit like the like two days before. So um, It's going to be fun, man. I'm excited. Yeah. Your plaque's coming. <laughs> All right, good, good. All right. I have a spot for it on my wall right there. He's got there. a spot. He's ready, dude. He's going to have it. He's going to sit there in the background and be like, yep, champ. I'm just going to be like, I'm just sitting here having a podcast and suddenly, oops. Oops, uh, winner. Oops. <laughs> I'm a winner. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, Connor, thank you so much for coming on Shoot the Shit. The first Shoot the Shit of 2021, that is. Yes. Um, can't wait to see uh, what you do this year and uh, definitely going to get you back from Ace Treatments as the guest judge this year. Oh, yeah, I like it. I like it. <laughs> yeah. The winner has to be the judge, man. For sure. For All sure. Right. I'll retire, you know, retire while I'm still ahead. Retire while I'm still ahead. I like And that. judge. Become um, like, it's like the star quarterback becoming the coach. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, if you guys enjoyed today's episode of Shoot the Shit, hit that like button with that subscribe button and that bell notification be where every time we put up a new video, leave a comment down below of what you guys thought about today's podcast. What music do you guys listen to? What haunt events do you guys go to? We'd like to hear it. Leave it down in the comments and leave Connor some. Nice comments down below. Also, go subscribe to Connor's channel. Links will be in the description below. Tell him Knights of Horror sent you. Um, follow us on social media at the Knights of Horror on Instagram and on Night and blah, 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 and Knights of Horror on Twitter. Uh, almost to two thousand subscribers, unless we've already gotten there because this is pre-recorded. But uh, <laughs> if we did, thank you so much. If we didn't, well, this is awkward. Um, <laughs> But we love each and every one of you guys so much. Stay safe out there. Wear your mask, social distance, wash your hands, all that fun stuff. And we will see you guys next time.